Hallelujah. Bless you guys. You can go take your seats. Man, I cannot tell you how good it is to be back so quickly and to see so many young people here tonight. Isn't that a blessing? Tremendous blessing. Hallelujah. Um, sound guys, can I, can I get these monitors? Again, I'll stand here and preach. If you guys can give me a lot of monitors, then you take care of the folks out there. Hallelujah. Wonderful. That's beautiful. Amen. How y'all been? How y'all doing? I, um, I, never, I never thought that I would be back so quickly, um, but here I am on a Wednesday night and, and pretty excited to be here and um, be with your wonderful pastors, Pastor Wes and Melissa. Come on, let's just clap our hands for these great, great people. Love you dearly. Uh, uh, is it all right that I just go on? Okay. Did you, did you want to say something? Or? <laughs> uh, that's how I know him. You better be ready. Wonderful. Um, so good to see you guys here on a Wednesday night. And I'm uh, thinking of Pastor Daryl that's in Bulgaria tonight. And um, our, our prayers and our thoughts go to him. May the, may the Lord use him in such a mighty, mighty way. Amen. And um, just, just come back with a ton of testimonies. Man, it does my heart so good to see America go back to church. On a Wednesday night, look at this. And all these young people. How many of you were here um, two Sundays ago when I preached? Lift up your hands. Okay. I really felt God do something there for young people uh, that morning. And um, thank you so much that I have the privilege to be back here at this special meeting. And uh, if you guys will give me 30 to 40 minutes and give me your utmost concentration, um, I would love to, to, to walk you through something that changed my life. Okay, will you do that? So grab your Bibles and go with me. I think what we need to do is let's read two scriptures. And let me see how far I can, I can go with this tonight. It's good to have my friend, Pastor Ruli Itzebet here. He's also from South Africa. If you struggle to say his name, just say unruly. Then you drop the un and you say Ruli. That's his name, Ruli Itzebet. Bless you, sir. Are you there in the Bible in Isaiah 43? Well, I probably need to tell you where it is, huh? That'll help. Isaiah, Isaiah. I'm in America. It's Isaiah over here. Isaiah 43 and one. Open, open your Bibles there, and then open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 35. We're going to read verse 19 to 21. Isaiah 43 and 1, and Genesis chapter 35, verse 19. If you've got your two hands there, say yes. The rest of the young people with the iPhones say A. How life has changed. <laughs> All right. Are you there in Isaiah chapter 43 and 1? Come on, speak back to me. But now so says Jehovah who created you, O Jacob, but formed Israel. He creates Jacob, but he forms Israel. Now just work this message with me tonight and turn to the person next to you and say, that's the same person. Okay, if you don't understand what I mean, stick with me for 30 minutes. Jacob and Israel is the same person. Let me just finish the scripture. But now so says Jehovah who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Two Sundays ago, I told you in the story of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel, that, uh, that there's a eunuch out there that wants to change names. How many of you remember that? I come here tonight with good news to talk about the only name change that we should be talking about. And it's these name changes that's in the Bible. Now, the scripture that I'm about to read to you now, I'm going to preach this to this house so you receive it as a church, but then you also make it 
personal. I am trusting the Lord to touch people tonight who've come through quite a bit. I'm trusting the Lord to touch people tonight that maybe lost a business, maybe went through a divorce, maybe dealt with something very tough medically, had to go through something in your body, had to deal with um, stuff online that changed your life and made it terrible. Deal with the things that some of the young people here tonight are dealing with. You guys watching online, you are included. Genesis 35 and 19, and Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. I want you guys to see this for yourself. And Jacob set up a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. But Israel moved on. I got one wow, and that's passed the ways. I got another wow over there. Say with me. My name has changed. And though Rachel was all of that, Israel moves past that experience and he moves on. Say with me by the Spirit, that which looks ugly right now. Come on, that's three of you. Say with me, that which looks ugly right now. Is about to look mighty fine. I'm warning you from the beginning of this message that Leah, she's not from our time. In a day like today, you need to be like very careful when you say stuff. You can't just say stuff. So back in the day, I'm, I'm just talking about a time, you know, that happened before. We boys that grew up in, in school, there were certain girls that was like really pretty to us. And then we used to could call certain other girls ugly. Did, did you see how they just tighten up there? Because we're living in a day where you, you can't call anybody ugly. So I'll just speak for myself. If this ugly dude can get a pretty wife like I got, there's a lot of help for you out there. <laughs> I am, I'm finishing this message to walk you through that this man, Jacob, that we're going to talk about tonight, that had a name change. He, back in the day, ended up with two wives. The one wife was called Rachel. And boy, she was pretty. Somebody say pretty. Leah, she had an issue. She was skew-eyed, cross-eyed. But if you will, I need to tell you tonight, by the Spirit, she had one eye fixed on the past. <laughs> but boy, she had another eye fixed on the future. And I'm re <laughs> to remind you tonight of a little phrase that a friend of ours from South Africa used to sing to America. I'm somewhere in the future and I look a lot better than I look right now. <laughs> Come on, do that with me. Say, I'm somewhere in the future. And I look right better than I look right now. Mm. Come on, work that with me. That's your friend. Say, hey, I'm somewhere in the future. And I look much better than I look right now. Now, that's a cute little phrase. But you know what? You know what? That can mean the world to somebody right now. So let's walk this thing through. Go with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 32. 
verse number 27. Genesis 32 and 27, and he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. How many of you remember the story of Jacob and Esau? Jacob and Esau is the story of their mother being pregnant. And she was pregnant with twins. The Bible says that the day that the twins were born, there was a fight in, in, in the belly of the mother. And, and then it was Jacob, and then it was Esau. And then it was Jacob, and then it was Esau. And it might not mean a lot to you tonight, but, but back in the day it was like a big deal. Because, because whoever got born first has all the rights to property, all the money, all the inheritance. So, you know, you're going to think about our guy, Jacob, that missed that by seconds. And the Bible goes and tells us that out came this hand of Jacob catching onto the heel of Esau. You know, names are so important because I don't know if somebody thought, huh, that's cute. Let's call him heel catcher. Imagine going to high school and your name's heel catcher. How many of you are thankful for your name? Imagine your name was heel catcher. Surplanter. Trickster. That's what his name is. That's what his name is called. Supplanter, trickster, heel catcher. And they grow up, and Esau, he's the firstborn. He's always the firstborn. He's always the firstborn. And he gets to hunt, and he gets to do this, and he gets to do that. And one day, he was out hunting, and um, he came back, and, and Jacob could cook, man. And he had the soup there, and, and Esau said, man, why don't you give me some of that soup? And Jacob threw it out there and said, why don't you sell me your birthright, man? I missed it with seconds. I'd like to be first for a while. And, and Esau did it. Esau did it. It's an amazing thought. The New Testament said God hates Esau. It's because he disrespected the first. First is powerful. So Jacob sells it. And he gets the, the firstborn right. Come on, you need to preach the story with me. I'm not telling you new news. You know this. And, and there's blind Isaac. Blind Isaac. He goes by what he feels. Because he's lost so much sight. And in comes Jacob. And Jacob says, um, I'm here for my blessing. And, and Esau hears this twist in the voice. Because he's expecting Esau to come in. And he just needs to make sure. And he asks Jacob this important question. What is your name? And trickster, supplanter, heel catcher lies. And he says, man, I'm Esau. And, Jake, and Esau, uh, uh, Isaac needs to go by what he feels. And he feels the hair on, on, on Jacob's arms. And he blesses Jacob. Esau comes home and he finds out what happened. Come on, you've got to preach this with me. You know the story. And off takes Jacob. And man, Jacob runs to his uncle's house, Uncle Laban. And um, Laban sees him, and um, they connect, and uh, Jacob says, Uncle Laban, will you please give me a job? And Laban says, that's right, I'll give you a job. And he works, and the Bible says the next moment, man, he saw this babe. She was wonderfully and awesomely made. And the Bible says that he was so stricken with love that he, he went to Uncle Laban and he said, what must I do to marry that one? And um, Uncle Laban says, well, you got to work for me for seven years. And man, Jacob was so excited. He got to work immediately. And the Bible says that the time flew by as if seven years did not happen. I remember that feeling. I'm not talking to the young people now. How many of the older folks know what I'm talking about? Man, I was so in love with Dunei. When I saw her, money didn't matter. I would go make debt to buy her some perfume. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that didn't go off too well. I was, just, I was just so in love with Danae. 
And um, the Bible says that after seven years, you know, Jacob was so excited. He's going to marry Rachel. And um, the Bible says that they spend that night together. And, and not, not to preach too much, it's a youth night. But, but the King James Version says, and lo, <laughs> the next morning, cock-eyed Leah, skew-eyed Leah. Now, that's, that's a message on a whole different level because I don't know how the two of them spent the whole night together. I mean, Leah must have had like a different shape than Rachel. All right, however that works. He wakes up the next morning, <laughs> and lo, it's ugly Leah. He goes to Uncle Laban. He says, hey, Laban, um, I thought I'm working for Rachel. <laughs> and Uncle Leah said, well, you know what? Over here, it works this way. The firstborn, <laughs> the firstborn. We marry her off first. So what you need to do is you need to work another seven years. And then you can get Rachel, which he did. So he's stuck with skew idea. Working it out for beautiful Rachel. And the Bible tells us that um, Leah was just so mistreated. Jacob didn't give her love. But man, she got pregnant like every time. While Rachel's womb was closed, Leah was giving babies, you know. And there she went, and Reuben was born, and Simeon was born. And, and in fact, she gave him the first six sons, including Levi and including Judah. Praise and the priesthood. That's really powerful. Are you with me? And then, and then from there, we pick up the Bible where I read to you that Jacob gets into this fight, and he's running, and he's running, and he's running, and the next moment, he, he ends up in this fight with this angel. And I, I, th I think everybody of us gets to this place in your life where you're just ready to face yourself in the mirror. I promise you all the young people will face that day. Uh, the selfie crazy generation, look at them. Some of them are on, the, on their phones right now. Selfie crazy generation are so infatuated with him. Every, every, my kids do every picture like this. And then, and then when it's not them and they like a group, they say, Dad, look, it's an ussie. Selfies and ussies. <laughs> I promise you there's a day coming where you're going to deal with you. And the angel's going to ask, hey, what is your name? And this time, Jacob's going to say, you know, you know what? I'm just done with running. I'm just, I'm just done with, with running away from. They called me trickster. They called me supplanter. They called me heel catcher. There you go. My name's heel catcher. And the angel said, from this day onward, you shall not be called heel catcher. You shall be called Israel. And God changed his name that day. Isn't that powerful? Okay. Okay. Stay with me now. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Quickly, quickly, quickly. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all will be made alive. Did you see those two names? Say with me, Adam. Say with me, Christ. Guys, can you just give me those scriptures and I'll just walk them through everything quickly. Adam, in, all, in Adam we all die. In Christ, we are all made alive. Did you see that? Now, go, now, now watch this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, this is very important to me. It says, so it is written, so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. Watch now. The last Adam, 
a life-giving spirit. Say with me, first Adam. Say with me, last Adam. Somebody say with me, Jacob. Somebody say, Israel. Somebody say, Adam. Somebody say, Christ. That's the only name changes we should be busy with. Okay, can I walk this thing out? Malachi 2.15 says the following. Did not he make one? Yet he had a vestige of the Spirit or a residue of the Spirit. Wherefore one? He was looking for a godly seed. Now for the older people, I know that chapter talks about marriage. But um, sometimes in the Bible it cannot, it, it, it's both and. It's not either or, it's both and. So watch me now. Did not he make, all the young people watch, did not he make Adam? Remember that? <laughs> but the Bible says that when he made Adam, he kept the residue of the spirit back. Watch me now. He makes Adam, he blows the life into Adam. And if I can mime it, I think God did this. Have you guys ever played that game? Let's see who can hold our breath the longest. <laughs> and God goes, and Adam walks it out. Adam messes up his garden. Adam messes up history. And all through the Old Testament, we read the stories of Noah and Abraham and David until God finds a bloodline that he works through and finally he sends his son Jesus. First Corinthians calls him the last Adam. And the fact that he was born through Mary, he was born the way we were born. And um, if your mom haven't told you yet, the day you got born, you came into this world and you did this. <coughs> ah! And watch me now. The last Adam took in Adam's breath. And the last Adam breathed like Adam. And the last Adam walked out 33 and a half years like Adam. And for 33 and a half years, he felt how it feels to be you. He felt how it feels to deal with rejection. He felt how it feels to deal with sickness. He felt how it feels to deal with all the stuff that we're going through. The Bible says he was tempted in every single way. So whatever you are dealing with, whatever you are going through, Jesus knows how it feels. He was a man just like you and me. He felt how it used to be, how, how it feels to be a human being. And then the Bible tells us about this beautiful story on the cross that Jesus paid that horrible price for. But watch this, watch this. He goes to the cross still breathing, still breathing Adam's breath. And then he goes to the cross. And this is why it's so important to me, that portion in the Bible, that Jesus is not the second Adam. The Bible calls him the last Adam. And the last Adam hangs on the cross. And the Bible says that he screams out these words. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And he breathes out the last breath that Adam will ever breathe. Hallelujah. He breathes out sin. He breathes out sickness. He breathes out anxiety. He breathes out depression. He breathes out pain. He breathes out wars and rumors of wars. He breathes out pandemic and viruses <laughs> the Bible says he dies and a soldier doubts the fact that he really died takes a spear and pierces his side and blood mingled with water comes gushing out of the side of Jesus which speaks of a human birth there's a message I used to preach in Louisiana years ago it's called the 40 second generation I encourage you guys to quickly, quickly, quickly go see this. Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1. This is the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David. Is that what it says? 
Verse 2. So all the generations from Abraham until David. Come on, read your Bibles. 14 generations. From David till the carrying away in Babylon. 14 generations. From the carrying of Babylon until Christ. 14 generations. 14 plus 14 years? 28 plus 14 years? Ah. 28 plus 14 years? 42. 42. Oh, please say yes. You had me worried there for 28 plus 14, 42. I encourage you tonight, parents, for Bible study this week. Go count those generations. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ju uh, Judah, go count all those generations. Up until Jesus, there's 41 generations. Oh, wow, Pastor Andrew, there's a missing generation. Yes, there is. It's called Christians. I'm going to try that again. It's called Christians. Because the 42nd generation is until Christ. Jesus is the head. The rest of the body is us. Why are you so drawn to these young people in a day like this, Andrew? Because they are the feed generation. And just like Jonah went into the belly of a whale, so Christ went into the belly of the earth. But after three days, like in a normal birth, uh, hallelujah, Christ came out. And the first thing out is just like a normal birth. The head came out. His name is Jesus. But after the last 2,000 years, the body started coming forth in the earth. And finally, there's a feed generation that can take the head where the head needs to go. Hallelujah. A feed generation that will put every last enemy under his feet. Woo! Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. Watch this. John chapter 20. Is it John 20 or John 22? What did I give you? John chapter 22, 20 verse 20 to 22. Now watch this. Jesus dies as the... Last Adam. Are you still with me? It's going to give me five more minutes. Oh, you've heard this before. None of these young people is going to lift up their hands because you know I'm going to do 5, 10, 15. I've got enough time. <laughs> They've been in church for a while. <laughs> okay, so watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus comes back after he died. The last Adam just blew out the Adamic breath. Three days later, Spirit comes back. And when he said this, he showed them his hands, he showed them his sight, and then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to un be unto you, as the Father has sent me, also I sent you. And when he said this, do you guys remember this? He blows the residue of the Spirit, and he says, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you will breathe over this generation in 2022 like never before. Father, I pray for the miracles to be back. I pray for the signs and the wonders to be back. I pray, Father God, that the fire of the Holy Ghost will fall upon our young people, that they will so burn for Jesus that people will come and watch them burn. Hallelujah. Father, blow over your people once again. Blow over your people, Holy Spirit, once again. <laughs> because there is a new generation. There is a new race. The Bible says that in Christ, we are now a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Andrew, I was born this way. Praise God, now we can get born again. 
Andrew, I was born this way. Praise God. I'm preaching to you about your name change. You can be born again. Andrew, you don't know. I come from that side of the tracks. Praise God. Now he can be born again. Hallelujah. Look at the person next to you and say, hello, brother. And if it's a sister, say, hello, sister. Because we are part of this Christ family. Please, young people, make me feel young. If I say something cute, just like act like it's cool, you know. Say to the person next to you, who's your daddy? <laughs> okay, that went off so far the best. Are you catching me? Are you feeling me? Oh, Jacob's name changed into Israel. Huh. Is it all right if I come down your cameras? Is it all right? Okay. So Jacob went through all these things in their lives. My 16-year-old keeps on telling me, Dad, life is so tough. And I'm like looking at her like, I'm turning 50 next month. You don't know what you're talking about, man. Okay, let me try the older people over here because that, that, that went off wonderful. 16-year-old. <laughs> I'm in love. You don't know what you're talking about, man. Hush. I, I received the best compliment the other day because um, I sat my two daughters and my son down and we had a family meeting. My house, my rules. That wow had a little edge on it. I'm, I'm just feeling you. So watch this now. So I'm laying it down. <laughs> I'm laying it down. While you are here in my house, these are the rules. And my daughter told me, Dad, all the boys are scared of you. I said, praise God. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> okay. Too much. Enough of that. I feel you. I, f I, f I feel, I feel you. <laughs> We're going through stuff. We walking through stuff. Sometimes life throws us Rachel. She's awesome. She's good. That social media group, you're it. Until one of those girls, until one of those boys changes it up for you. You have to deal with the ugliness of one eye looking this way and another eye looking that way. And you know, you worked so hard for Rachel. And the Bible says that Jacob traveled with Rachel and the next moment she dies. Have you ever had a dream die on you? Have you ever had something great just Boom. Have you ever felt that, man, I wish I could have that moment over. That was my, that was my moment. I mean, that was, that was my opening. That was my door. And now it dies. That was Rachel. And, 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 do, you, and do you guys know why she died? She had this baby. And back in the day, they didn't have nice hospitals like we have now. And this baby killed her. That's why Rachel died. And like they did in the old days, like they did in the old days, they would call names out of the experiences they had. Remember Jacob's name? Remember that? Yeah, heel catcher? Well, well, that's why. Yeah, yeah, let's call him New Heel Catcher. And Rachel, this beautiful woman, went through so much pain and so much anguish. That the ones helping them said, um, um, what would you want the baby to be called? 
And Rachel said, call him Benunai, son of my sorrows. And Jacob, who kind of got this name change thing down now. Let me show you something. Because after Jacob's name was changed, Jacob starts referring to himself. And I encourage you to go ahead and read about this. When he's going through a tough time, Jacob calls himself Jacob. Although his name was changed to Israel. He calls himself Jacob. He refers to himself as Jacob when he's going through a tough time. But, but, but in, in Genesis 48 verse 2, just to prove a point, and one spoke to Jacob and said, Behold your son Joseph. It's a whole different preach, it's a whole different message, it's a whole different story. But, but, but he had the son Joseph that he loved. And, and his brothers um, sold him and told Jacob they, they, they killed him. And, and, and when, 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 when Jacob was an old man, he found out that Joseph was alive. Read, 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 chapter 48. It says, and when he received the news, Israel strengthened himself. The new identity, the name change, that's where your life and your true identity lies. In Christ, in Christ. So watch this. Rachel dies. And the Bible says that Jacob buried her right there. In fact, I read to you at the beginning of this message what happened there. Can we go back to that scripture in Genesis 32? No, that's not the right one. The very last scripture that I have on my notes. 35. Genesis 35. So Rachel died, and she was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel's grave up until today. And then Israel moved on. Who played the keyboard tonight? Come and help me, please. What are you saying, Andrew? I'm saying, deal with Rachel. She died. There's a little boy left, and Jacob just changed his name from Benunai to Benjamin, son of my sorrow, to son of my right hand. I don't care what your name is, tonight it changes from Jacob to Israel. Tonight it changes from Adam unto Christ. Tonight it changes from Saul unto Paul. Hey! Skew eyed Leah is still alive. <laughs> Remember old ugly Leah? She's still there with her skew eyed self. I told you, one eye on the pass. <laughs> now that Rachel is gone, I'm keeping this one eye closed. I'm just looking at this future. Somewhere in the future. And I look a lot better than I look right now. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, I'm somewhere in the future. And I look much better than I look right now. So you better put your body where your face is. So you better put your body where your face is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ugly Leah. And the Bible says that there's a grave. Graves were like really important in the Bible days. And only the richest of rich people could afford caves. To bury their loved ones in. How many of you have ever heard that Abraham was like a very rich man? The Bible says that Abraham bought this cave called the cave of Machpelah. And the Bible says that in that cave, in that grave, is the bodies of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and ugly Leah.
How many of the older folks understand? <laughs> I'm passing 50 now. I'm finding out that all the Kennedys have like these arches on the side of their face. Stuff, what I'm trying to say, things start hanging. Get to the prettiest girl that you know and tell them, guess what? Stuff's going to start hanging. When you get old, ears, noses grow tall. <laughs> I'm too afraid to ask the older people, can I get an amen? <laughs> but let me just work with this. Because I bet you Pastor Wes and Pastor Melissa can tell you that, you know, you're 16 years old and you tell me I'm in love. What we mean when we say you don't know what you're talking about it's because if you get married and you are married as long as what we are, 45 years. Come on, let's clap for that. Come on, let's clap for that. How many of you have been married for longer than 45 years? Stand to your feet. Come on, stand. how long? Forty-two? Fifty-one. Forty-six. Come on, let's clap for them. Come on. Yeah. How long? Forty-nine. Come on, let's clap for them. And you guys look better than what I look. Wow. All of these folks that we just clapped for. And by the way, that's important. Clap for the young people. Not you guys. Clap for the, you know, young people. No. Clap for the young people. All right, young people, clap for the old people. By the way, that's important. It's important. All these folks that are married so long will tell you, after a while, all the curves, I don't know, can I say butts? All that stuff. I'm, I'm just talking out of my house. My 16-year-old says, oh, dad, he's got such a beautiful behind. I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to hear that. You're 16. Read. Kick a ball. Play like we used to do. You're starting that wild business again. They will tell you, 40, married 45 years, 50 years, 55 years. It's not about all of that anymore. It's about the condition of the heart. It's about loving the person. It's about loving the fact that we can talk, enjoy life, be together. It looks to me like Jacob really loved ugly Leah. Yet to the end. Because I bet you what, if he really loved Rachel that much, why didn't he go dig up her grave and ask all his children, now the day when daddy dies, you know, my, my mom asked me that. My dad died 20 years ago. My mom said, the day that I die, I want you to go bury me on dad's grave. I'm going to do that. I'm going to honor her. I bet you if he loved Rachel that much, he would have dug up that grave, took the bones, and made sure that it always will stand. Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Rachel. But ugly became beautiful. A crisis became a blessing. I'm leaving you with these words. Walk it out, young people. Walk it out. Because he creates Jacob. But he forms Israel. <laughs> and your name change is going to take some forming. 
How many of you are hurting right now? Come on, lift up your hands. Come stand here. Come, come stand here. Everybody 25 and under that's hurting right now. Come stand right here. Make a long line. Face me. Come on, come on. That's right, come. You've been dropped from a, a sports team. You, your family's going through a tough time. Come, come. I, th I, think, I think there should be more kids that need to be honest right now. Come, come stand here in front. Come, I invite you, come. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He, he didn't look at the time. That was like a big bad deal. I mean, she's just having a tough time with the baby and then she dies. And what must have felt like the end of Jacob's life right there. If you, if you walk a thing through, and, and I tell you what, there's nobody as precious as Jesus. The Bible says that even if you make your bed in hell, he's right there. Andrew, where is Jesus in tough times? Right next to you. He's right next to you. And I prophesy and I leave you with a word tonight. Because you know these things that they are going through, it might not seem like a big deal to some of us, but it's massive to them. How many of you remember those words that stuck with you? When that teacher said, you stupid. How many of you remember those words where one of the kids just said, no, you're dumb. Those words mean a lot. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, God's changing words tonight from Jacob to Israel, from Adam to Christ, from Benoni to Benjamin. From Jacob to Israel. So we're going to have a funeral now. Play me some funeral music. <laughs> Andrew! Yeah, we're going to bury Rachel. Let's get done with it. She died. So bury it. Bury it. behind you I speak to you by the spirit tonight and I say it's behind you it's behind you it's behind you it's behind you look at me it's behind you it's behind you and I feel the Holy Ghost it's behind you come 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 parents come lay your hands here on this it's behind you Come, ushers, come, 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 come. It's behind you. You will never go through that again. It's behind you. It's behind you. Hey, buddy, it's behind you. It's behind you. It's behind you. It's behind you. Thank you, Jesus. It's behind you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's behind you. It's behind you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Some of you guys that I, I understand the feeling, I understand. It's just it's just a while to walk out. I'm telling you guys, it's behind you. It's behind you. Rachel, Rachel, sorry man, she's dead. I, I'm I'm so sad that it happened to you. It's behind you. It's behind you. Father, I pray for even the tough stuff. 
come against every evil spirit that wants to molest these kids, that wants to rob their lives. I come against the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus, and you die as well. You are behind these kids tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I take, care, I take authority over every person that touches these kids. You back off in the name of Jesus. May the angel of the Lord that is up to our command be a God around our children in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys, watch this. The thing about a funeral, the thing about a death, is that a cause or wise people will tell you, you know, there's a time for this. You need to cry. You need to mourn. And then you need to walk it out. Somebody say, walk it out. Can I tell you what you can walk out? Well, there's a little baby boy whose name was changed from son of my sorrow to son of my right hand. <laughs> and there's an ugly Leah that's about to become actually very pretty. And she's going to give you a great family with awesome people around you. Firstborn Reuben. If you go study those names, the one means, oh, so I see you now. Oh, so I hear you now. I prophesy over you that, they will be, that you will be seen by the right people. That the right people will hear you in Jesus' name. And I pray that the end of this story is a beautiful story. That something so powerful takes place that Leah at the end is the one that you will fall in love with. Don't curse, Leah. She's actually beautiful. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's clap our hands here tonight. Let's give God some praise. Come on, let's give God some praise here tonight. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. The Bible says, Jacob buried Rachel. And Israel moved on. If you got, all of you guys make a left turn like this. Go do. Come on, make a left turn. In fact, everybody stand to your feet. Let's work together. Everybody, everybody, let's stand together. Say with me, Jacob buries Rachel. Now everybody work with me and walk to your left hand side and say, but Israel is moving on. Come on, let's give God some praise here tonight. Yay! Hey! <laughs> we should write a song about that. We should write a song about that. Jacob buries Rachel, but Israel moves on with ugly Leah. All the young kids say with me, Hey Leah! Hey, Leah. You skew out beautiful, you skew out beautiful thing, you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I leave you with this thought. I leave you with this thought. That one eye of hers on the future. And I say unto you, you are somewhere in the very near future. And you look much better than you look right now. Come on, give God some praise here tonight. Yeah.